jet engines for the first successful jet fighters, developed by Junkers, BMW and Messerschmitt. The German and Japanese scientists' checks revealed no damage to these fragile engines. Germany's technically superior Messerschmitt jet fighters were eagerly sought by the Japanese Air Force. They were a last desperate resource to turn the tide in the Pacific War. The Japanese high command believed they could disrupt the American bombers and win back aerial supremacy. The transportation of the Messerschmitt planes was top secret. But as Herr Lauenstein's research has proved, little about this mission remained hidden from the British. The codebreakers at Bletchley Park had seen to that. Hundreds of staff worked in shifts to crack the codes of the German Enigma machine and reveal the hidden messages. The British Ultra Machines meant that almost all radio traffic was deciphered, especially the U-boat communications. One intercepted message spoke about the cargo of U-864. The British codebreakers discovered and reported every detail, even the names of the German and Japanese scientists and the cover name of this secret mission, Operation Caesar. After the grounding, U-864 put in to the city of Bergen in Norway. The vessel was brought into dry dock inside the U-boat pen, Bruno. The last massive beachhead of the German Navy in the North Atlantic. This stopover in Bergen was not on the original itinerary of U-864. Drawing on their unexpected leave, the crew were allowed ashore. Captain Wolfram and his guests visited the officers' mess at naval headquarters in Bergen. The captain, his officers and guests all recorded their visit in the mess guest book. Wolfram wrote the motto of all German U-boat captains, heart of gold, clear horizon. Referring to his grounding he wrote, we were lucky again. This luck ended just hours later. British Lancaster bombers launched a massive air raid on Bergen. Their target, the U-boat pen, Bruno. One enormous Tallyboy bomb hit the reinforced concrete walls of bunker number three. Inside lay U-864. The crew of the U-boat had to extend their stay in Bergen for repairs. All this confirmed the growing apprehension of the German mechanic Willy Transier. He had his doubts about this voyage even before it started and now saw his misgivings confirmed. Just before departure, he wrote a last message to Edith Wetzler. This is the last photo of my fiancé, which he dedicated to me with the words, Farewell greetings and kisses, your Willy. Just before Willy left Germany, he and Edith had become engaged. He said, pray for me that we come through this in one piece. And he said to his mother, Mama, don't be sad if I don't come back. I know you're too old to have another child. Or I would have said, have another child so you won't be alone. And he said to me, should you be pregnant, please, please let me know. But I wasn't. It didn't turn out that way.
The intercepted radio messages were forwarded to the submarine base in Lowick, Shetlands, the home base for submarines like HMS Venturer. Action stations! Action this 740-ton V-class submarine had already sunk 13 vessels in the North Sea and North Atlantic. Fire one! She was under the command of Lieutenant Jimmy Launders. Yes. John Watson was navigating officer in HMS Ventura. We knew we were in a weapon, a war weapon, and we, it was one that we knew was very effective beautifully built and that uh, our objective was to do the job and then get back alive. 25-year-old Lieutenant Jimmy Launders was a rising star among Royal Navy submarine commanders. Target range 2,500 yards. Able seaman Harry Plummer, the torpedo man, also has fond memories of his captain. Fire one! Fire one! Confirmed. Well done, boys. I think he knew his job, and he got on with his job. Nothing interfered, and we trusted him. We knew he was a good commander, and we would have gone to the end of the earth with him because he was that good. The eleventh patrol of HMS Ventura saw her ordered to the island of Faya. The waters around this island were strategically important. German positions dotted the landscape to protect the area from Allied naval attack, lying just off occupied territory. As it reports, this mission had brought them into the lion's den. We received a lot of death charges in the course of the patrols, and we realised that it was a sort of rebate coming back again for what we'd done. In Feia, the Norwegian research vessel, Geobay, is ready to cast off. On board, Wolfgang Lauenstein and Dr. Eric Grove, the leading British naval historian. This trip will bring them to the site of the still unnamed wreck. This was the main path to the open sea of the U-boat base at Bergen back there. And so if German U-boats were going to move and going to be operational, they had to move through, the, through these waters here. And this meant that if you wanted to interdict that, if you wanted to stop the movement, then here was where, or just off here, was where you concentrated your anti-submarine assets. For three days, Ventura lay off the Norwegian coast, but with no contacts. On February the 5th, Launders received a message sent by the Admiralty. Message to send, sir. It suggested that Launders position the Venturer near the lighthouse of Helisoy, on the southern coast of Feyer. U-864 had finally relaunched Operation Caesar and set out to continue her journey from Bergen. Her way out to the open sea would take her close by the island of Feyer. The recently repaired engines were reporting no problems. The German crew didn't know that Ventura was so close and on the lookout. Up periscope. Launders made careful use of his periscope, but how to detect a U-boat 